join kids hat family What are you trying to do tofu? I am trying to pluck mangoes from this tree, but the effort is going useless. That's because the mangoes are too far away and the stones are too heavy. Then what should I do, dear? I really want those mangoes. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. The three little pigs. Once upon a time, there was a mama pig and three little pigs. One day, mama pig said to them, You are old enough to build your own houses. The first pig built a house of straw. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The second pig built his house with sticks, stronger than the first pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. The third pig built his house with bricks, stronger than the second pig's house. He said, Now the wolf can't come and catch me and eat me. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of straw. The wolf knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed. The house of straw fell down. And the wolf ate up the first little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of sticks. He knocked at the door and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. So he huffed and puffed and blew the house away. The house of sticks fell down and the wolf ate up the second little pig. Next day, the wolf came to the house made of bricks. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. I will not let you come in, said the little pig. Then I will huff and puff and blow your house away, said the wolf. The big bad wolf tried to huff and puff and blow the house down. But he couldn't. He kept trying for hours, but the house was very strong. He tried to enter through the chimney, but the clever third little pig boiled a big pot of water and kept it below the chimney. The wolf fell into it and died. <laughs> So, the way the third wise pig managed to escape from the wolf without using weapons, but through his wisdom, would you be able to do the same? He looks so 
tofu wolves are known to be clever and cunning my childhood memories with wolves are quite interesting especially the story of the wolf and the seven little goats the wolf and the seven little goats wow i haven't heard that one tell me the story tia the wolf and the seven little goats once upon a time there lived a mama goat and her seven little kids this was a happy little home all the seven little kids used to play in the meadows into the wild with the butterflies and birds singing along their days used to go in complete harmony and bliss until one day a big black wolf noticed these little kids playing in the meadow ha 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 such an easy treat they are for me i haven't eaten since ages I'm sure these would make delicious lamb chops for my dinner tonight. He waited for the moment when the mother goat would leave her kids alone, patiently hiding in the bushes. Children, I'm going to the market to buy bread and cookies for you. I'll be back by evening. Just make sure you remain conscious of this big bad wolf. But mommy, how would we know if it's not you? The wretched wolf can easily be recognized with his hoarse voice and black feet. Don't open the door or else you little ones would get into danger. Don't worry, mommy. We would take care of ourselves. The mother goat went off to the market and the kids made doubly sure with the locks on the door. After making sure that they are safe in their little home, off they went to play when suddenly there was a knock on the door. Hello my children, open the door. Your mother is back. Hearing the voice The youngest one scampered to the door. Mummy, mummy, she's back. In no time, the eldest one ran to catch his little sibling. No, it's not our mummy. She hasn't got such a rough voice. And then, looking at the door, the eldest kid shouted back saying, "Go away, you big bad wolf." A mother doesn't have such a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the wolf got annoyed and ran to get a box of chalk as he had heard that this would make his voice as soft as that of a baby. But kids, you shouldn't do this at any cost as this would only make your tummy ache badly. So off he went and cut off the whole box of chalk. Knocking on the door again, he said, "Hello kids, your mother is back. Look what I have got for you. Cookies, breads, and ginger ale." "Oh, that sounds like a mother. Should we open the door now?" "But look down there. A mother has not got black feet." This is surely the wolf. Go away, you big bad wolf. A mother has not got black feet, but beautiful white feet. Hearing this, the wolf ran to the miller and jumped into the mountain of white dough. He was all white from head to toe. Running back to the house, he knocked again and said, "Kids, Your mother is back. Open the door. That sounds like a mother, and also the feet are white. We should open the door now. Not knowing what danger awaits them, all the kids ran to the door and opened it. But just to see, 
who was standing there. The big bad wolf gave a loud laugh and brushed off his white powder. Hello kids, are you ready to become my feast tonight? The kids ran here and there to save their lives. One went inside the kettle, the other in the oven. One looked for a place under the bed and the other tried saving itself by hiding in the pot. The youngest one was so tiny that he managed to hide himself inside the clock case. The wolf, having no mercy, started taking them out from their hidings. One by one, he rolled them in a ball and gulped them up. Ah, there goes the first one. Oh, the second one is under the bed. Here you go. In no time, he ate all the kids except for the youngest one who was hiding in the clock case. With his tummy full, he burped and left the home. When the mother returned, she was shocked to see the door open and waited for the biggest nightmare that might have come true. The house was all upside down. The crockery was broken. The curtains were torn. The chair was broken. And the kids were nowhere to be found. She cried for them. <laughs> children! Oh children! Where are you? At that very moment, the youngest one came out of the clock case and hugged his mother crying and howling. Oh mother! The bad wolf disguised us by sounding and looking like you. He ate up all my brothers and sisters. What will we do now? Don't worry. Let's go and look for him. They went out searching for the wolf. His tummy was so filled that he slept off in a meadow near the house itself. His snores were so loud that even the branches of the tree were shuddering. The mother goat very quietly went near him and asked her youngest kid to get scissors, thread and a needle. Off he went to get them. The mother goat very quietly slit open his tummy and took out all her kids from his tummy. They then filled up his tummy with stones as big as balls and then she stitched the tummy with the thread and the needle. The wolf had such a huge feast after so long and he slept all night. In the morning when he got up, he was so thirsty that he tried running to the well. But his belly was so heavy that he could hardly walk. He picked up his belly and managed to reach the well. But the moment he bent down to drink water, he couldn't handle the weight and fell in the well. The kids were looking at all of this from their window and shouted happily. Mommy, mommy, the wolf has died. Now we can play freely outside without any fear. And they lived happily ever after. Now that was one cunning wolf. But Tofu, if you be bad to others, bad happens to you too. Always remember that. Yeah, Tia.
Chia, that monkey over there tried to imitate me. <laughs> oh, really? Tia, why are you laughing? Wait, I'll tell you why monkeys do this. The monkeys and the cap seller. Once, a cap seller was going to sell his caps in a village market. Caps, 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 5 rupees caps, 10 rupees caps, caps, caps. He was going through a forest. He was carrying a basket of red caps on his head. He got tired in the heat of the sun and thought of lying down under a tree for some time. He put his basket on the ground. <sighs> I am so tired. Let me take a small nap. There were monkeys on that tree. They came down <laughs> and one by one took all the caps from the cap seller's basket. Then they climbed on the tree. When the cap seller woke up, he was shocked to see his basket empty. He searched for his caps everywhere. To his surprise, he saw the monkeys were wearing them. He found that the monkeys were imitating him. So he started throwing his cap down and the monkeys did so. The cap seller collected all the caps, put them back in his basket and went away happily. So Tofu, we should deal with cleverness in such situations because wisdom helps during difficult times. I understand. Mmm! Mmm! These cookies are so yum! I can eat them forever! Tofu, have you ever imagined what if these cookies become alive? Alive? Hmm! This reminds me of a story. The Gingerbread Man Long ago, there lived an old couple. One day, the old woman cooked a gingerbread cookie in the shape of a man. As soon as the gingerbread man was cooked, he jumped out of the tin and ran out of the open window, shouting, Don't eat me! He ran away as fast as he could. The old couple tried to chase the gingerbread man but he was too fast for them. Soon, a hungry pig saw the gingerbread man and said, 
Stop! I would like to eat you! He too joined the chase. The gingerbread man was too fast and said, You can't catch me. I am the gingerbread man. A little further, a hungry cow saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you! She too joined the chase. You can't catch me! I'm the gingerbread man! Next, he met a horse. The horse too joined the chase. Finally, the gingerbread man came to a river and stopped as the river could make him soggy. A clever fox came by and wanted to eat him up. But he pretended to be nice and offered help to the gingerbread man. He asked the gingerbread man to climb on his head so that he could take him across the river. The gingerbread man was so scared of water that he agreed. As soon as they reached the other side, the fox tossed up the gingerbread man in the air. He opened his mouth and ate him up. That was the end of the gingerbread man. <laughs> I don't want my cookies alive and get eaten by a wolf. <laughs> Enjoy your cookies, Tofu. Tofu, don't worry. We will reach our camp soon. But I'm still feeling scared. <laughs> Wait, let me tell you a similar story. It will help you to distract your mind. Goldilocks and the Three Bears Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She had golden hair. One morning, she was walking in the forest and lost her way. She saw a friendly cottage. Wow! She knocked on the door. But nobody was there. She went inside. The friendly cottage belonged to three bears. Goldilocks was very hungry. She saw three bowls of porridge on the table. First, she tried a spoonful from Daddy Bear's big bowl. This porridge is too hot. Next, she tried from Mama Bear's medium bowl. This porridge is also too hot. Finally, she tried from Baby Bear's small bowl. This porridge is just right. And she ate the whole bowl. Now Goldilocks was tired. She saw three chairs kept in a room. This chair is too big. This chair is too big too. This chair is just right. 
but the chair broke. Goldilocks was very tired, so she went upstairs. She saw three beds in the room. She sat on the first bed and thought, This bed is too hard. This bed is too soft. This bed is just right. Soon the three bears came home. Who's been eating my porridge? Asked Daddy Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? Asked Mama Bear. Who's been eating my porridge and eaten it all up? Cried Baby Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair? Daddy Bear howled. Who's been sitting on my chair? Wondered Mama Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair and it's broken? Cried Baby Bear. They went up in the room and saw Who's been sleeping on my bed? Said Daddy Bear. Who's been sleeping on my bed? Said Mama Bear. Who's been sleeping on my bed? And she is still there! Screamed Baby Bear. Goldilocks woke up and saw the three bears. She was so frightened that she jumped out of the bed and raced through the forest. And she never came back. Oh, Goldilocks lost her way too, just like us. <laughs> no, Tofu. We have not lost our way. See, we are already at the camp. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.